Hello everyone and welcome to another approach tutorial. Uh, we're back in the Zeebo and today we're tackling uh, uh, Kai Tak International Airport. Uh, we've done this approach uh, a few weeks ago in the Tolis and it's time uh, we tried it in the Zeebo. Now I'm pretty sure everybody in the flight sim community will know Kai Tak but in case you don't just a little uh, just a little insight in what it is. So Kai Tak used to be Hong Kong's international airport um, up to uh, the 1998, I believe. Um, so around 23 years has been closed. So in 1998, um, then the, this airport was closed and the new international airport in Hong Kong was open. So you can see the new international airport is this one over here and Kai Tak used to be here. Now, very, very famous is one of the most uh, challenging, one of the most dangerous um, approaches in the world as um, all airplanes used to for the approach to runway 13 rather than 31 used to fly over this really congested metropolitan area um, extremely low because of course the turn into final was just a, on top of the city so very very famous now it has been closed so um, this airport is not simulated in an x-plane you will not find it in x-plane uh, but there have been uh, of course uh, community resources and, and you can go and download it i'll put a couple of links in the description you will have um, a post from uh, i believe it was from uh, vatsim uh, where it gives you all the resources to uh, install the airport scenery and the navigate uh, that you'll need to navigate into there and then there's another um i'll put another link to iveo where you get all the charts but let's have a look at what we're going to do now i didn't do a flight today from another destination i just started from kai tak i flew one of the uh, sit out and connected it to a star and then we're coming back so let's have a look of course on navigraph you will not have any charts uh, or any possibility to plan your flight on navigraph or sim brief as the, uh, the airport doesn't ex no longer exist um, but you can do it uh, manually as having all the charts uh, of course once you've installed the airport and all the navigates and everything you will have all the procedure available into the fms um, so that's not a problem at all now to see what i programmed we have the arrival onto what is well victor hotel hotel x-ray and the arrival for today is going to be the IGS-13, which is the equivalent to an ILS, which is the main approach used to get into Kai Tak. And the star is the Daml-13. Now, in terms of star, it doesn't really matter what you um, what you select and where you're coming from. You can simulate this flight uh, from anywhere you like. All the stars um, end at the same point. So this tutorial will be valid for any star and any departure airport you're flying from. Everything ends up in Chung Chow, this uh, VOR over here, so Charlie Hotel. Um, and the procedure starts from there. So now we'll have a look quick, quickly at the um, FMS, checking that everything is correctly programmed. We do have CH. Chung at 8000 and that's correct. Let's have a look at the IGS chart. There we are. So we have Chung Chow at 8000. Eight there we are. So that's correct. 8000 at Chung Chow and then we turn west heading towards Gulf 270 degrees. So we have, there we are. Chung Chow, that 271, 270, yeah, that's correct. Maximum 210, and we have 210 below, and 6,000 feet, and we have 6,000 feet there. Then we're going to go SL, Sierra Lima, and then we're going to D15 over here, and from there we intercept the glide slope. So from there, we can see we're going to be at 4,500, 4,500. 
and then we're going to intercept the descent at 3.1 degrees down. The way we're going to fly, so we'll be standard configuration when we start the glide slope, and then we're going to go down the glide slope, and the missed approach point here is, um, well, of course, a bit peculiar, because it's before a final turn, so the guidance from this IGS approach is going to take us only down to this point, which is over here. And then after that, it will be a visual maneuver. The very famous visual cue here, it will be the checkerboard. So there's a hill with a huge concrete uh, red and white checkerboard, and that's what we're going to keep in sight. Then we'll continue, then after here, we'll continue manually, and we'll do the final turn. The lighting given with uh, the scenery is fantastic, absolutely phenomenal, so it's, it's very, very easy to fly manually, as you have all the tools to do it. Now in terms of, let, let's have a look at what we need, and start entering that. So we have IGS, the frequency is 111.9, so here, 111.9, and we'll enter that, 111.90, 111.90. The course is going to be 88, so we can enter that here. And here, we're approaching the top of this end, so I'll put already the can go directly to 4,500. There we go. Now, uh, the elevation of the airport is 1.5, and we've set 0 on the pressurization panel, so we're good. And we're going to fly, we say, here to Golf at 6,000, so we start descending from 8,000 to 6,000 at Golf, well, at or above. And then we'll turn right, continue descending to 4,500, and then over here intercept the IGS. We'll do that as the traditional ILS, so with our LNAV and VNAV all the way down, and then we'll activate the approach phase before intercepting the, the localizer. Of course, it tells you the localizer of, is offset 48 degrees, as we need to do that big turn on final. Now, missed approach is mandatory by um, the middle marker, which is going to be here. If visual flight is not achieved by this point, we need to go around. In carrying out the Mr. Pro's procedure, the right turn must be made at the middle marker as any early or late turn will result in loss of terrain clearance. More than terrain there, there I'm pretty sure it would have been more a matter of building clearance. There's a lot of high rise and skyscrapers. After passing middle marker, flight path indications must be ignored. So, of course, it will still give you indication for the flight path, but it must be ignored after the middle marker will go fully visual. And apart from that, not much to see. We have the, the minimums, which is going to be a 675. So we'll set that here. Six seven five, and we're good for the IGS localizer plus glide path. And we have selected that, so when you go and select your arrival, make sure you get the glide slope on, and you have that. For the rest of the chart, here just to double check our altitude, and we have everything we need. And then the chart of the airport itself. If everything goes according to plan, we land on runway 13, which is over here, it's 3,300 meters. So long enough, that's the total. The threshold is quite displaced, not exceptionally long, but it's more than enough. They used to land 7 for 7 regularly, regularly, so no problem there. So we start in our descent. Let's set already the Q&H. Let's go back to our chart then what we're going to do today the IGS of course would be the preferential um, approach for runway 13 uh, but today I am going to do then a go around or a bulk landing after landing with the IGS and then come around 
and land again but of course we don't want to do all this long procedure the other procedure which is used over here which is quite fun it's the visual step down and that's what we're going to do in the second part so we're going to reposition ourselves go around reposition ourselves to the Chongqiao VOR but at this point it's just going to be a visual maneuver we're going to fly down all the way directly to the checkerboards basically um, I will show you how to program once we go around how to reprogram this one we'll enter this point a point before that to align ourselves and then the stone cutters NDB which is the main guidance for this procedure and then we'll do the final part uh, manually but for now let's stick to the IGS we're doing now let's go and get our meter see the QNH is 1009 our destination 1008 Oh, press the wrong button. Six, seven, five there. There we go, one, zero, zero, eight. Perfect. Okay, yeah, we were away in a constraint there. We needed to be below 14,000, so that's why we descended a little bit more quick, quickly. And now we're leveling off and we'll come back from 14,000 descending again at this point over here. Then we have a deceleration point there. At the VR, we want to be at 240. And we want to slow down quite a bit before golf. It says below 210, but I'll be slower than that. Also, because the procedure here, we are planning to go to SL, to the NDB here. And to make that turn correctly, we need to be below 180. Otherwise, you would skip the shallow one NDB if you're going faster than 180 and then just intercept directly the IGS. We'll want to slow down correctly. So the missed approach procedure is here continue on KL localizer climbing to 4,500 feet at the middle marker turn right to intercept the 136. So basically the missed approach procedure is the same thing, the same identical thing you would do to land, but just climbing instead of descending. And then you continue towards the DH uh, Tango Hotel VOR and then hold there. But that's already all programmed in the FMS, you can see here. There we are, and the blue line, blue dotted line, that's our missed approach procedure. We're now 20 miles from Chongqiao. We need to lose 5,000 feet in 19 miles, so we're good on profile. Of course, I have created for myself um, ortho scenery for the area. It definitely adds a lot to the visual aspect. And uh, I have as well um, X um, Asia. So the buildings you might find, especially the default buildings, will be very different 
with Xasia, the uh, the landscape there and the buildings are a lot more accurate. Okay, the same checklist pressurization, we have the landing altitude is set at zero. Anti-ice is not needed at the moment. Approach briefing and fuel. Approach briefing, we discussed it. Fuel, we have plenty. And altitude bags. Oh, we just need to put the EAS bag. There we go. So we're burning before we land another half a ton so we're gonna land at 59.1 and the speed is gonna be 134 plus 5 what's the wind let's see the wind this wind is 172 at 11 knots oh that's great that's perfect for what we're trying to do today So we hit the deceleration point, we are decelerating towards 240. We are on profile. So we're doing well. gonna start decelerating manually just help myself with some flaps let's put flaps one that helps us decelerating while staying on profile a little bit high but we're good we're catching up on the profile we can put up to flaps five below 250 Then golf is in seven miles. We need to lose two thousand feet, I believe. Yeah, golf six thousand, two thousand feet in seven miles. That's good. That allows us to decelerate a little bit as well. Let's go flaps five. Set two hundred, and we keep decelerating. Can use a little bit of spoilers as well. And the scenery for the airport adds a lot to the area, uh, adds a lot of landmarks. I don't know exactly which ones come from the from the scenery, but if you get the scenery for the International Airport, which is Victor Hotel, Hotel, Hotel. You really have all the all the landmarks in the area, and it adds so much. There we go. We're now on profile at the correct speed.
It was a 90 degrees turn, so we overshot it, of course, but Zebo does a really good job of getting back on the lateral profile. At this point, we can activate the approach phase. So we're on LNAV and VNAV path. Activate the approach and we have VOR lock and glide slope armed. There we go, it's now showing the VOR, it's already intercepted the, the localizer. VNAV alt, so 4500, and we're about to intercept the glide slope. It's a 3.1 degrees glide slope, so you can go down with flaps 5. Have enough drag not to accelerate down, uh, down the glide slope. There we go, glide slope intercepted. Mist approach altitude is set, it's 4500, so it stays the same. Doesn't seem to be, doesn't seem to have any DME indication, but we'll, yeah, we have the middle marker there, so that's, that's good enough. Yeah, we will need the DME to be able to cross-check these altitudes, but unfortunately, we don't get that. But it's fine. Auto brake. I didn't set it, sorry, I was busy chatting. Auto brake, we'll keep it at two. That's more than enough. So we rely on the indication here on the ND instead of checking the DME. We are five, seven and a half miles from there, from the um, the point where we'll disconnect. So the middle marker. So let's do gear down now and flat 15. Match the speed. And the pro speed we said is going to be one three four plus five one three nine. Get this down, let's arm the spoilers. Let's pretend we've been clear to land. And then let's go flaps full. 139 is set. Okay, landing checklist start, which is continuous. Recall check speed brake is armed and we have green light. Landing gear is down, three green. Auto brake is set to two. Flaps 40 require 40 selected green lights and landing lights are on. And we are good. We can start, we can see now the checkerboard. 
which is over here for guidance and we can see the start of the approach lighting system which is here and then turn this around over here let's disconnect the auto throttle so we get control of that manually already and we can disconnect the autopilot now keep it coming down still around 700 750 feet per minute depending on the speed yeah even a little bit more we're doing 150 so yeah 750 should be minimums at this point let's recycle the flight directors now and now we start making the turn stay on top of the lights two white two red little bit of crosswind so it's pushing us farther let's hold it down perfect a quick double to go on the brake to disable the auto brake. We'll go full toga. Flaps up three notches. We go to flaps 15. Power is coming up. And rotate. Positive three. Gear up. Activate LNAV and VNAV. Activate auto throttle. 400 with on LNAV. Plus up 10. Above the 10 bag. We go flaps 1. Activate the autopilot. Above the green one, we go flaps up. And there we go. Okay, so start switches to off. Let's turn the landing lights off. Gear off, auto brake, so after takeoff checklist, air conditioning pressure is set. Engine start switches to off, landing gear up and off, auto brake off, flaps up, no lights, and altimeters are set. Perfect. So at this point, we are going to go and reposition ourselves for the visual landing. So now to do that, we're going to want to go on to Departure Arrival, Arrival, and just select Runway 13. Runway Extension, we don't really need it. FBA, we don't really need it because we're coming from, not from the extended center line. And stars, we don't need it. So we'll just execute that. And at this point in the leg page, we have just TH and then directly the runway so what we're going to want to do we're going to want to program what we need so we're going to need ch here the vor and we want to be it's because it's ch we need to start the descent i like to get there 
already with a correct heading. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a point, a custom waypoint before CH, exactly on this heading. So 4, 5, the reciprocal is 2, 2, 5. So we create CH on the radial 2, 2, 5 at, oh, let's say, 8 miles. Should give us enough time to then turn and get stable. The VR is 112.3, so it's this point. We've created the point there. After that, we want to go to the VOR. So we'll put this on top of the runway. There we are. And then after CH, we want to be at Stonecutters. So Sierra Charlie, Stonecutters. So we'll give ourselves, and that's the NDB236. There we are. We have everything we need. We can use that as a guidance in real life. It would have been, I don't know if they would have used automation or not, considering given it's a visual procedure, uh, but we'll see what we're gonna do today. Now, at this point, what we want to do is to go directly to CH01. So we'll just have a look here. CH is there. We'll just take CH01, pop it on top, and we go direct to. It's a very, very tight turn there, so you could add another waypoint. I don't know if it does it. Mm, probably it's not going to do it that way. I don't know if it considers that point as something that you can program from. There we go. I added another waypoint over here, so we have a, a better turn, let's say. Perfect. Looks a lot better. But remember, to enter custom waypoint, you always put the name of the point you're basing yourself off, and then the direction from that waypoint, at which you want the, the new custom waypoint. So in this case, I selected CH225 for the first waypoint because I wanted to go all in a chart. I took the 045, did the reciprocal, so I wanted to create the point exactly on this side. And I did eight miles. And then I wanted to create a point to give me to give myself a better turn over here. So I created another waypoint from Charlie Hotel. Instead of 225 this time, I offset it 30 degrees. So 195 and the 10 miles, of course, accounting for the diagonal. So 10 miles instead of eight. Now, the way we're going to fly this one is very, very simple. From Chongqiao VOR to descend, um, I believe it's around the 3.5 um, degrees. Uh, glide path now technically here it says when clear for visual step down to runway one three maintain minimum two thousand until dme7 from k some kilo lima kilo lima which we know it doesn't give us the dm the dme so that's not really possible to use or dme4 from the VOR. So what we're going to do, let's program the VOR, which we said is 112.3. 112.3. There we are. We can program as well the course 4.5. So we know we're going to be on course. We can double check that. And also, the guidance is to the stone cutters ndb which is sierra charlie 236 so we'll put that one in as well
two, three, six. And why not? We'll put it here as well, just in case. At this point, we have the VOR over here. We select this one, ADF. So we have the Chong VOR and the Stone Cutters. NDB, both visualized on the NDA, and that's exactly what we need. So we have the DME and uh, everything else. Now we will need to calculate the descent at 3.5. We found this the easiest way to, to do from the VOR descend at 3.5 degrees. So we want to start slowing down. I will want, because it's a visual procedure and I want a stable path down uh, without ballooning or anything, we want to be already practically fully configured. Flaps 30 gear down at the VOR and start a stable early decelerated descent. Let's just put our landing lights on and we'll keep the taxi for when we're cleared. And let's start decelerating. Actually, we put the, the point at 8 miles, so well, there was plenty of time to decelerate, but better safe than sorry. Check the QNH again. That's very important on visual procedure that the QNH is absolutely accurate. So we're flying correctly. 1008 and 1008. Perfect. So we're going to use vertical speed to go down. Remember, vertical speed, you cannot open the window if you have the same altitude. So you cannot start the vertical speed descent if you have the, the same altitude you're at over here. So to do that, we'll need to just move it down or up and then start, start our descent. As we don't have a, a specific altitude to descend to, I'll just move it up 500 feet and then activate the vertical speed descent. So we have to in the VOR. Course 45. So we can see here the green line. That's what we're following, and we know that we're doing the correct thing. And let's start slowing down now. Let's put plus 5. Can put gear down. Below two hundred, we can go flat fifteen. 
set 5000 for now there vertical speed we open it we leave it at zero for now and then 0.3 from chung we want to start our descent now let's slow down further flaps 30 V ref is 139 and we now start at 0 0.3 from Chung we start descending 1000 feet initially then we need to calculate it the ground speed is 176 170 so 170 multiplied by 5.3 that's 900 if we were on a 3 degrees divide that by 3 and multiply by 3.5 we need 1050 so we'll play between 1100 and 1000 and 1000 okay let's finish the lights start which is continuous brake hole is checked Auto brake will put two. And start switch is continuous. Recall check speed brakes. We need to arm them. And they are armed. Green light. Landing brake is down three green. Auto brake is set to flaps. We'll need to put the final notch. We can put it down now. And landing lights are on. So four DME we need to be above 2000. Not at 2000, it's just above. We're at 3000, and it's a visual maneuver, so we just need to eyeball it. Let's go down to 1000. And here we've done it in LNAV because we had selected stone cutters. Otherwise, we could have done it manually, but just by tracking the blue indicator that takes us to the NDB. We have activated here ADF, so it's showing the NDB, and we would just track there or use the track four or five. So many different ways of, of doing that. Now we'll go on to manual throttle. We need to wait until we are on top of stone cutters before the turn, but in my scenery, I have a very tall building there, so I'll go a little earlier. Disconnect the autopilot. Cycle the flight directors. And here we have an indication, 0.3 mile, 0.2. I will start the turn now, because I have this very tall building here in the way. Checkerboard is in sight, it's over there, and we have the approach lights over here. So we head in between the two. Wind is from the right, so it's pushing us to the left. Keep coming down at this point, we keep that descent around 800, 900 feet per minute. for the turn keep in mind that wind is pushing us to the left three white one red Two white, two red. 
Thank you. Down. Full reverse it. Go manual braking. Eighty knots. Reverse it to idle. Do the reverses and we vacate over here. Go flaps up. The spoilers have been retracted automatically. Landing lights off. Strobe off. Start switches go back to off. Roll beat goes off. Let's start the APU. That's where we're taxiing. We're on Bravo 4. We go Bravo 4 all the way to here. Or oh, actually, that's a very long, boring taxi. All the way back, so we might take one of these. Yeah, we'll take something here on the South Apron. APU's up. I'm entirely sure I want to bash my wing against that. Building, we'll take that one over there. Lights off before turning on to stand.
Parking brake is on. We can turn the engines off. Pulling down now. And the condition light can go off. And we release the cabin crew and the passengers. Welcome to Hong Kong Itac International Airport. There we are. Definitely, definitely worth the effort of installing the airport, the navate, and also making Orthos and X um X Asia for the buildings. It really makes this this little corner here a fantastic place to fly in and out. Uh, and it's beautiful to try with different planes. I've 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 tried with a Cessna, with a seven four seven, with a Concorde. It's absolutely stunning. It take take your time to to create um, this airport and this area, and it will be hugely rewarding. But once again, thank you very much. I hope it's been useful, and I hope uh, you'll have plenty of fun recreating this flight. And as usual, if you have any comments, please do let me know. Um, in uh, down in the comments, of course, and uh, if you have any other, I'm starting to run out of ideas. Uh, so if you have any other suggestion of places to fly, very difficult approaches uh, that require a lot of planning and a lot of programming, do let me know. I'll be more than thrilled to give it a go. But we'll have a look at the replay, maybe both landings. But for now, thank you very much, and I hope to see you back soon. Thank you.